JP Morosi, the hardest working man in show business. He was at Dodger Stadium. Good morning to you at 1 a.m. And you were part of the broadcast for the Dodgers and the Giants. And I heard you during the broadcast tell the story, my friend, of Jung Hu Lee. We all, we talked about this in the offseason. We all had expectations for him, JP. How has he met them? And good morning. Good early morning to you. Long, long good morning. Yes. Jung Hu Lee, I believe, in many ways, in talking to people around the Giants, has actually exceeded the high expectations wow. early on this season. And I, I go back to last night's game. He was actually 0 for 4 entering his final plate appearance against Evan Phillips, the Dodgers' dominant closer. And he finds a way to have a line shot single in the ninth inning and get the tying run on base for the Giants. It's the little things like that that show how quickly he's adapting to the major league game. I also think you look at his defensive play, the Giants have also been very impressed with him in that regard, Bob Melvin spoke with us yesterday. He he really enjoys managing Jung Hu Lee because he's a very fundamentally strong baseball player, and there is a really good skill set there. There is some power there. Of course, we saw the home run he hit over the weekend in San Diego with his father, Jung yeah. Bong Lee, the Korean baseball legend in the stands. And actually, Lauren, I got to tell you this: you know how much I love the international game. I had a chance to meet Jung Hu's parents yesterday too. What amazing people! And then we what talked a bit about them? the baseball. I, well, I, we I wanted to talk about his career. Of course, Jung Bom Lee himself was a KBO MVP, and then Jung Hu Lee becomes a KBO MVP. And, and Jung Bom Lee, in so many ways, was one of the early stars of KBO back in the 1990s, only in the second decade of professional baseball in Korea. So this is this is Korean baseball royalty we're talking about. That's why uh -huh. when I was talking with, with people in Korea, where you, why you saw so many Giants hats there on the subway as I was riding around uh, in Seoul a couple of weeks ago, yeah, the Dodgers and Padres were there, but I was seeing Giants hats because Jung Hoo Lee wow. is in many ways the most popular Korean baseball player Oh, yeah, wow. Giants and Dodgers is our showcase game tonight, JP. And the, the Giants dealt with an opener last night, pushing Tyler Glass now back. And I heard Dave Roberts say, oh, you know, an extra day's rest. And I thought to myself when I heard it, it's early for that. No, what's his reasoning? What's his goal? Well, Lauren, that's a very interesting question because this is not just a, a one-time deal for the Dodgers to get everybody one additional day of rest. I think this is going to become a normal situation for the Dodgers early on this season, at the very least, where if you want to call it a modified six-man rotation, that's probably what it's going to okay. be. Because when you start to go down this Dodger rotation and ask yourself, Glass now, he has not been a 200-inning type pitcher in his career, so you want to give him a little bit of extra rest. James Paxton has had some injury issues in his past. Give him some extra rest. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, give him some extra rest because, of course, in his situation, coming over from NPB where he has been having five days of rest. Bobby Miller is still a young arm, as is Gavin Stone. So when you look at it, Lauren, there's a reason for all five of the guys in the rotation right now to have an additional day of rest. And so I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to see, like yesterday, a Ryan Brazier being an opener. You may see Ryan Yarbrough giving uh, giving him some modified, longer, but but not maybe quite a, a five or six inning start, but sort of like an opener type start for Yarbrough. He was the bolt guy last night. But Lauren, this is going to become a normal thing for the Dodgers. And it's worth watching to see as the year goes along, once Walker Buehler is back, once Clayton Kershaw is back, how do they handle all of this pitching? It's it's a valid question, and I suspect, Lauren, this is not the last time on the show this year that we'll be talking about the rotation and how they're utilizing the need for rest with a very talented group. And it is a problem they are willing to have. J-Mac, our amazingly creative producer, said, from the restless to the young, a transition I'm not smart enough to think about, but Josh Young is our next topic because when he got hit in that wrist, we just thought, darn it, that stinks. How do you fill the void, JP? What's the answer to that? It has become, as J-Mac may, may be leading us to, a bit of an injury soap opera for the, uh, for the Rangers well done, early on. This yes, uh, I appreciate that. So, the Rangers have called up uh, Justin Foscue, one of their very top prospects, their fifth prospect in the organization. He will come back and probably get some starts over at third base as they try to make up for the absence of Josh Young. Now, the second straight year that Young has had an injury issue in Foscue. The thing about Foscue to watch, 
Look at his minor league track record. He's someone that has walked more than he has struck out. How about that, Dero? It's not a lost art, my friend. He's able to, to get on base a lot, very, very few strikeouts. And for a Rangers team, it's still sort of finding their way a bit. Remember, Nathaniel Lowe is also on the aisle to begin the year. Evan Carter off to a slow start. He's batting third right now. So you've got Carter batting third. Uh, you've got Wyatt Langford batting fifth. And now you may see in, the, in many cases, Foscue joining the lineup. It's three really young hitters coming in uh, to the team on a, on a consistent basis. So it'll be interesting to see. Of course, they do have Ezekiel Duran, one of my favorite players to talk about because of how diverse his skill set is, how how he can really jump around the diamond and, and, and have different positions for you. So I think in general, the Rangers having to get maybe a creative early on this season, but Foscue, d -Row, more walks than strikeouts. You got to love a guy like that. He's out. I think he's eating in the cafeteria. No. Okay. <laughs> you well. need to go eat. You're in Los Angeles. Enough with the work. Go to the griddle. Have some fluffy pancakes and live a little. What say you? Will you do uh, that for me? Lauren, I love the breakfast in L.A. You, you got to go to John O'Groats there on Pico Boulevard. Okay. Thanks, bye. Got it. J.P. Morosi, appreciate it. On the inside corner, we will see you on our showcase game tonight. Robert, take it away.